Gonky. Hmm. The last Harrier pilots yeah. have been formed. <laughs> That's right. So what? The summer? I don't know. Six months ago, the Marines closed down the Legacy Hornet training, right? The Miramar. It looks like they've uh, graduated their last class of <clears throat> Harrier pilots. So Captain Joshua Corbett and Sven Jorgensen have completed their training. So they've been training in Marines and the Harriers. To me, it's crazy since 1983, which I didn't, I didn't realize. They were How long I've been existing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so last two are done. Two in a class is, I don't know if that's normal as a F-18 person. That was, that would be kind of a small class, but um, they're going to fly the Harrier until 2026. And then, you know, the Marines have put all their eggs in the F-35 basket. So these two guys will probably end up flying the f-35 at some point still using the harrier obviously like mover we've covered some of the stuff they've been doing <clears throat> or not or doing. not doing or yeah. not doing or with not. the or hoodies not. um and i think it's crazy i mean I, i'll ask both of you you uh you guys as far as the the harrier goes to me it's like a it's like a unicorn i think i've seen one in real life like in my entire yeah. flying career at an air show and it like it's got a pretty capable radar. Like it has the same radar in it that the legacy Hornet had. It carries AMRAM. Like it's a pretty capable airplane, but like they would never, all of our exercise, they, we never had Harriers. Uh, maybe once I saw one flying in El Centro, but I mean, I, to me, I, our, when the Navy uh, had the legacy rag, so VFA 125. So I was an IP there. <clears throat> when they closed down Hornet uh, training A through D model, the XO was always a Marine and he was a Hornet guy. <clears throat> and he always wore this patch of a Harrier. <laughs> it just said, scarier, stop the madness, <laughs> you know? So like, you know, and I talked to him a little bit about it and it was almost like even, even within the, the Marines, like they, the Harrier community was kind of a outcast, but I don't know what, have you, have you guys ever had any experience with them, seeing them, flying them, fighting them. I've literally yeah. only seen them at air shows as well. Right. <laughs> and no, like I, twice I, in three years. Yeah. I've fought them. Really? Mm -hmm. Scared the crap out of me, dude. So, uh, cause we had a Marine guy in our squadron and they came down cause dude, Homestead, we'd always get like, cause we had chum X. We'd always get all kind of weird jets and stuff coming out. And we, I was the adversary, the bandit for a two V one. And I'm like, dude, this is going to be easy, right? You know, maybe club and baby seals because I'm in a clean Viper and they're in that. And I didn't get warned until after that they do this bat turn where they move the nozzles and they can just point the jet. And you're like, oh, my God. And I just went straight up. Like, I was like, nope. And just up into the Vozo sphere and then came down and, you know, gunned them both. But that initial turn was like eye watering. You're just like, holy crap. What did he just do? Uh, the other experience I had was not Marines, but the, uh, the Brits really, cause I was doing an international red flag. Yeah. This is how old I am. Gonky. Uh, we were doing an international red flag and Mace before the show, we were talking about the, Hey, I'm going to shoot somebody in the face, so to speak. Uh, you know, because my essay is degraded. Yeah. Same standard act from this, from this group, different guy. Uh, we're going cold. And he's like, uh, target group, bra, what, you know, bullseye, whatever. And it's like, that's the strikers. That's your own people. They were like running in at a hundred feet behind us, you know, to go attack the target. And he's like, declare group. And it's like, no, friendly, friend. you know, this is our guy. He's behind us. That's where he's supposed to be. He's going to the target. And they were Harriers. They were the, the B, you know, the B A C Harriers or whatever the, the British, uh, they had come down and I was. I was so impressed that they were flying at a hundred feet. Like to me, that was as an air force guy who's, who was limited to 500 feet at the time. That was like, Holy crap. And it was, it was pretty cool. I mean, I saw him like, you could see him down there, you know, and you're like, God, that like it's desert and then jet. And yeah. it's, there's like not much in between. So, uh, I think that was, might have been one other time uh we we did some stuff with harriers but i mean they were always really cool i mean did you pilots <clears throat> different breed. they're like helicopter pilots and fighter pilots at the same time 
Yeah. Did you actually like get a hangout with the the Brits afterwards? At, they were at the debrief, but they, I think they were staying on base and we were doing the, uh, Hey, we're going to stay downtown. So no <laughs> <laughs> standard, <laughs> like two of us is leaving after the debrief. We got to go. Yeah. But going back <laughs> to your article, Gonky, uh, I think that's a, you were saying to a class of two. So you're either the best or the worst in your class. Man, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. You know, um, there was, uh, one or two. So when I was in T45s as a student, there was one or two Marines that got Harriers. And like, you know, <clears throat> Marines are just like, they have that. I got to support the 18 year old in the ditch with his gun with my bazillion dollar fighter jet. So like some of those guys wanted the Harrier because they're like, I want to get in there and I want to get in bed with my troops, you know, whatever. Um, That's an Air Force. Why we right? have the. Huh? <laughs> it's more of an Air Force thing, but go on. <laughs> Getting Which, in bed with your troops is not a Marine thing, I don't think. I, you know, uh, you know, it's like they want to play infantry with their gazillion dollar fighter jet, which is you know why we have the the F thirty five B. So, um, I don't know, man. I, they could have been top of their class. I don't know. Mover, I do you. think you gave a really good example of when it was appropriate to take the fight in the vertical in that story. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Because you have nowhere else to go. You're right. scared. Your advantage <laughs> is your, your thrust, so to speak. Yeah. It turned into a P 51. <laughs> Went down. Uh, Gonky's bullying the small classes, according to the kids at home. Uh, also, I mean, you know about true lies. They blow up the bridge. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Remember that? Yeah. yeah. And then they blew up a lot of stuff in true, true blew up lies. a terrorist with an amp aim nine. They sure did. Yeah, they used I him keep, and the AIM-9 to take out a helicopter. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's called efficiency. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so sorry to see it go. It's always sad, like last of anything, right? Last of, you know, because it's we're moving away from the good old days.